Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. The title of this mechanisms video is Organic Acids Test Fungal Markers and Mycotoxin Profile Relationship. So this video is sponsored by Integrated Medicine Academy. Integrated Medicine Academy is an online training academy with various mastery courses in topics of integrative medicine. We have many different courses. For more information, you can go to integratedmedicineacademy.com or email us at integratedmedicineacademy at gmail.com. The video disclaimer is understanding that this information is for educational purposes only. So what we're going to talk about here in this video, and I've talked about this in many of my organic acid test seminars, is the relationship between the organic acids test and the mycotox profile, specifically coming from Mosaic Diagnostics, which was formerly Great Plains Laboratory. So if you have watched some of my videos before or taken some of my mastery courses or even taken an organic acid test seminar from previously Great Plains or the Mosaic Edge, which is now uh, associated with Mosaic Diagnostics, you'll understand that as you go through the organic acid test that on page one, there are a number of different markers that are linked to candida overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, and then mold exposure, particularly aspergillus exposure. And so you'll see on this particular case, we have one marker, tartaric, which is linked to aspergillus colonization within the digestive tract, and then arabinose is a common marker linked to invasive candidiasis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this section of the test. So as we move in a little bit closer, you'll understand that markers 2, 4, 5, and 6 are linked to aspergillus mold exposure. This says nothing about mycotoxins. This is specifically looking at mold exposure to aspergillus. Now, there is another marker called tricarboxylic, which is linked to fusarium mold. And this is another common mold environmentally, but it can also come from food exposure like grains, corn, and corn product, for example. So just take note that there's only this marker here, tartaric, that is considered to be sort of somewhat mildly elevated. But when we look at the mycotox test, when we look at the mycotox of this individual, we the picture starts to change a bit. So Aspergillus is showing up high on the mycotox profile with regards to aflatoxin and ochratoxin. Now, ochratoxin is a fairly common mycotoxin for people to be exposed to, but aflatoxin is not. In fact, it's not very common at all in my experience. In fact, the most common mycotoxin in the aspergillus section is ochratoxin. Gliotoxin would be second most common. So when we have aflatoxin high, we have to be concerned about significant mycotoxin exposure. So ochratoxin is both nephrotoxic, immunotoxic, as well as carcinogenic, and it can create problems in the brain linked to dopamine uh, issues. It can be seen elevated in individuals with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and autism, but it could also cause liver problems and kidney problems in other people as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the mycotox profile is only a test for detection. It's, it's showing you what you've been exposed to. It's not defining with absolute certainty or guarantee that a particular health issue is occurring because of the presence of the mycotoxin test. So the mycotoxin test, again, is just showing you the present, that you have been exposed. <clears throat> Now, aflatoxin is the same thing, but the problem with aflatoxin is it also is very toxic, or certainly potentially toxic, in any given individual. And so it can actually compromise the glutathione system. So a lot of these mycotoxins can be detoxified or neutralized by glutathione, but the more mycotoxins we have in the system, obviously the more opportunity they have to, to create certain imbalances in the body. The other markers that showed up elevated in this individual was penicillium. Now penicillium environmentally often hangs out with aspergillus. We can see quite elevated levels here, both steric and mycophenolic. 
And what's interesting about these mycotoxins is mycophenolic is immune suppressive. So it can interfere with B and T lymphocytes. So it greatly compromises adaptive immunity. In fact, what's often seen in people with high levels of mycophenolic is increased potential for recurrent clostridia as well as candida problems that we can pick up on the organic acid test. Stearogmatocysteine is not a common mycotoxin, at least in my experience. It is often related to aflatoxin. So there is clearly a relationship here between stearogmatocysteine and aflatoxin, both between aspergillus and penicillium. And so when you see these together, it's showing you that there is quite a significant exposure to those molds that produced it and then the accumulative nature of the mycotoxin itself. The other mycotoxin that was elevated in this person that certainly could be linked to aspergillus was citronin. Now citronin can be produced by aspergillus as well as penicillium and this other mold called monascus. And in our experience, typically when you see citronin, you know, clearly aspergillus is a common mold that we can be all be exposed to. And some people will want to claim that it's a mold that's commonly or a mycotoxin like uh, be, would be commonly found in food. But when you start putting more and more of these mycotoxins together, this is more than food exposure. Um, this is clearly environmental exposure. And somebody like this needs to absolutely uh, take seriously what maybe they be, are being exposed to environmentally in their home, at their office, at school, etc. So again, the citronin generally is additive, if you will, with regards to its potential toxicity on top of things like ochratoxin and uh, aflatoxin, et cetera. But one of the striking things that came out of this particular case, and by the way, this is actually a family that does have known mold contamination and exposure, was this particular chemical called verucarin A. Now, verucarin A is linked to stachybotrys, which is a very toxic, dangerous mold. This is not coming from food. This is coming from the environment. But one thing to keep in mind is that on the organic acid test on page one for mosaic under the yeast and fungal markers, you have four markers that are linked to aspergillus exposure. There is no marker on the oat test that is definitive of stachybotrys. The only way you're going to know if somebody is stachybotrys exposed is to actually do a test. And why this is important is if you only assume that somebody has aspergillus, you can miss many of these other very toxic compounds. And verucarin, along with reorin and E, are extremely toxic mycotoxins that can have all kinds of adverse health effects. And so it's important to appreciate the utility of the organic acid test and the mycotox and not skip on one because of some assumption that the organic acid test is enough information. And we can see here that verucarin falls in this category of what's called trichothecene mycotoxins that create a lot of oxygen uh, and free radical damage throughout the body. They can damage DNA. They can damage different uh, tissue structures, nervous system. They can get into the bone marrow that affect the spleen, immune system, you name it. This is nothing to overlook. And so again, even though it's not a common marker to show up elevated on the mycotox profile, if the mycotox profile had not been done, this particular mycotoxin is lurking in the background. And again, this is an uh, individual that has known mold exposure that needs to be remediated. So you can see there's quite a few mycotoxins in this person, even though the organic acid test only showed one mild elevation of something called tartaric linked to aspergillus. So the take home point is the oat is its own test. Do not rely on it to determine mycotoxins. Do not assume just because the aspergillus markers are non-existent or barely existent that the mycotoxins are totally benign. You have to do the mycotoxins as well. And this is a very good example of that. Also, don't assume that if only one or maybe two aspergillus markers show up on the oat, basically linked to aspergillus, that you can just assume 
that that's the only mold the person is exposed to. And why that's important is that again, things like verrucarin A linked to trichothecenes have a different level of toxicity and the interventions can be different. The binders can be different that are used and these things need to be tracked and followed up on. So minimally in a person like this undergoing some type of detoxification uh, process for mycotoxins, you need to be doing repeat testing about every three months to be able to track progress. Now, people who are being exposed to mold environmentally, if they don't remove themselves from the environment, or for example, their home that is mold contaminated and they continue to be exposed to mycotoxins, well, they're always gonna have some circulating level. So the difficulty is, is you can try and do different types of detoxification remedies, but if they keep getting exposed, well, essentially they're just gonna get minimal results. Now, one of the things that mycotoxins go after a lot is mitochondria. And so mitochondrial problems are quite prevalent in individuals with mycotoxin as well as mold exposure. And one of the courses that we have through Integrated Medicine Academy is what's called the Mitochondria Mastery Course. And of course, there are other things that can affect the mitochondria, but if you have an interest in organic acid testing, then eventually you need to have a deeper understanding of the mitochondria and how things affect the mitochondria because it plays such a huge role in overall health as well as different types of chronic illness. And then part of Integrated Medicine Academy are other courses that we have on advanced organic acid topics, hormones, autism, uh, gastrointestinal problems, candida, et cetera, including the mitochondria mastery course. So for more information about our different mastery courses, you can go to integratedmedicineacademy.com. You can also email us at integratedmedicineacademy at gmail.com. Okay, so thank you so much. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.